Merlin Glenn. I'm a technical product manager of the VMware. And in this Lightboard session, we're going to be talking about PCF, our Pivotal Cloud Foundry, and an NSX overview. So we'll ask the question, what does PCF need from an SDN? So one of the first things uh, that we know PCF is going to require is going to be layer two networks. Multiple layer two networks. So we'll start with logical switches from NSX to solve the layer two network need. So we'll start with an infra logical switch or infrastructure. Uh, and another logical switch for ERT, or Elastic Runtime. This is the component of Cloud, of Cloud Foundry that's actually Cloud Foundry, where your application instance is actually run. And we'll have multiple services networks, or logical switches. Now the reason we want all these logical switches is when we look at Cloud Foundry, how Cloud Foundry is deployed, we're gonna have some Cloud Foundry capacity um, that's going to be running the control plane of Cloud Foundry and our infrastructure network. And those are going to be two really key virtual machines. Uh, one virtual machine called Ops Manager. We'll just put Ops Man. Uh, and another called Bosch. And, and Bosch is really the automation component of Cloud Foundry, if you've seen some of our previous light boards on what is Cloud Foundry for vSphere. And Bosch is what automates the deployment of the remainder of Cloud Foundry. Um, now, Elastic Runtime, which is really the bulk component of Cloud Foundry, it needs its own Layer 2 network. And uh, there's various components inside of Elastic Runtime, um, but we're going to focus in on some of the key components that have to do with networking and routing as we go over the NSX integration in this light board. So a couple of the, the key components we'll have are cell servers. So I'm just writing the word cell. Cell servers are the component of Diego inside of Cloud Foundry that actually run the applications, the containers. Um, so we'll have an AI or an application instance running on one or more cell servers. And then these, these services networks that we brought up here. Um, Cloud Foundry, or Pivotal Cloud Foundry, has the capability of managing multiple services that our applications can consume. For example, we can have RabbitMQ. Or we can have MySQL. or Redis, or various other pivotal Cloud Foundry service tiles. Uh, in each one of these service tiles, we'd want to have a, a dedicated Layer 2 network with routable IP space. So this is our Cloud Foundry layout and why we need all these Layer 2 networks. Um, so these Layer 2 networks, of course, are going to need a route uh, between each other. So we'll have a distributed logical router component. DLR, um, that all of our networks will uplink into. Now, in addition to our Layer 2 networks, uh, we need to start to have some controls. We need to have some Layer 3 boundaries in these because we talked about um, subnets coming here. So in each one of these networks, we're going to have, for example, in our, in our infrastructure network, we would have a slash 26 because we're only going to have really two or a few VMs that might be part, uh, additional VMs as part of the management control plane. In our IT subnet, we might want to slash 22 because we might scale this component out quite large depending on the size of our Cloud Foundry deployment. In each of our various service networks, these might be slash 24s. Uh, for example, if we're going to run RabbitMQ, uh, we may only have you know, 20 or 30 RabbitMQ VMs, but uh, we might have a larger uh, or a variable, variable size for MySQL and Redis. So our Rabbit VMs here. Now, Cloud Foundry has a component called application security groups. And this is one of the reasons why we have all these various layer twos. So when we talk about what does Cloud Foundry need, it needs some layer three controls as well from a SDN. So these application security groups are a form of layer three control that are internal to Cloud Foundry. So ASG. Uh, and what they do is when an application has to actually 
access a service or an external service. It could be an internal service that's hosted by Cloud Foundry or an external service, you know, like an external data store. Um, Cloud Foundry, had, through this ASG construct, will allow us to do some egress whitelists. Uh, so that means we could actually tell these AIs, based on the AI space membership, um, whether it can or can't be allowed to filter out and actually talk to a particular internal service or even an external service. So our ASGs are something internal to Cloud Foundry that give us a little bit of a, of a capability to do some, some layer three controls. In addition, um, we're going to have, in a Cloud Foundry deployment, we're going to have an NSX Edge gateway. And this edge is going to provide various services to us. And this, one of the services that it's going to provide is going to be layer three controls as well. So we can have layer three ACLs into the various subnets uh, across our DLR from the NSX edge gateway. Now, we can also look at things like an NSX distributed firewall, but we won't get into that into this Lightboard session because this one's a, 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 high, a high level overview. What are the, the key components or the key constructs that are going to be required from NSX uh, to, to allow Pivotal Cloud Foundry to run in production? We'll have some follow-on Lightboard sessions that'll dig into the DLR and to uh, distributed firewall policy and, and, and a much other, uh, many, many other components of, of NSX that are going to expand into Cloud Foundry. So our NSX Edge Gateway is giving us our Layer 3, uh, layer three controls. In addition, some of the other things that, that Cloud Foundry really requires from SSDN is load balancing. And here again, our, our NSX, is going to, NSX Edge is going to provide us our load balancing services. So what's going to happen with load balancing is um, notice down here when we look at Cloud Foundry, our application instances are running in these cell servers. So there's, a couple of, there's quite a few other VMs that are being deployed inside of Cloud Foundry. And uh, some key VMs are called the Go Routers, which we're going to just use GR as the acronym for the Go Routers. Uh, and at a base level, applications uh, are provided access by these Go Routers. These Go Routers will actually load balance to the various cell servers that are running the appropriate application for an application request. So from a load balancing perspective, uh, we need to have uh, a virtual server running on our NSX Edge, or VIP. So we'll just call this VIP1. And VIP1 is going to have a DNS map. So we would have a DNS request to myapp.foo.com. Uh, that DNS request would hit VIP1 on our NSX edge because that's where it's mapped to. Uh, and we would have these Go routers actually be the pool members of VIP1. So our VIP1 pool is down here. So therefore, in Cloud Foundry, when we get a request for myapp.foo.com, if it's spinning on one of these application instances in our cell server, it's going to route through our NSX edge, through our load balancing service, ACLED uh, for our layer three controls, and actually hit the Go routers, the pool members that are the Go routers, and be distributed to the appropriate cell server. So this is a really key concept in Cloud Foundry. And there are multiple VIPs, uh, but one of the, the core VIPs that, that we're going to concern ourselves with in the Lightboard session is the app access VIP, which is what we're describing here. So this is something else that the, that the NSX Edge is, is providing for us is load balancing. Now. We also want our SDN to be able to do NATing. And that's going to be SNAT or DNAT. And the reason for that is, is all these logical switches down here, the infrastructure, the elastic runtime, and all our service logical switches, we really want these to be RFC 1918 networks. That way we can have a pattern deployment if we have to deploy Cloud Foundry in multiple instances so that we're not consuming routable IP space inside of the enterprise. So it's, it's a best practice, and it's something that gives us a really good scalable footprint and something that can be repeated in an automated fashion. So our edge is giving us NAT functions in addition to our load balancing and our layer three controls. Now, what else do we need from our SDN? Um, Cloud Foundry is, is a really scalable architecture, and a new component of Cloud Foundry uh, with release with PCF 1.10, is called isolation segment. And what an isolation segment is, is the ability for us to take the core components 
Remember I said in Cloud Foundry and in the Elastic Runtime, we have more than just Go routers and cell servers, but these are the core components that, that allow applications to get routed to and, and run and execution time for the applications. What we could do with an isolation segment is make another separate deployment of just the Go routers. and cell servers. So that if we, had, if we had the concept of applications, maybe when we want to host some public facing applications on a different set of gear that may have a different network or routing path in and out, that's what the concept of an isolation segment is for. And with an isolation segment, we would require another layer two network. So we'll call this one a logical switch isolation or ISO that our new Go routers and cell servers would connect to. And we'd also want that to be connected to our distributed logical router. So that logical switch is going to have a connection into our DLR so that we can actually have control plane traffic traverse from Bosch to be able to provision and manage some of these components to have our isolation segment set. And what this is going to allow us to do from, uh, from an app perspective is our VIPs. So if we have another VIP added to our edge layer, we could create a VIP2. And VIP2 might have a DNS entry of myapp.foo-public.com. So when the DNS request for the application hits, it gets a separate VIP that has a separate set of pool members, which are now down here. So these would be our VIP2 pool members. So our application requests or going to a separate set of cell servers that we can control where that execution space and where that route path is taking. So when we start talking about that, well, one of the things we need from our SDN when we start to scale out in that manner is we need our SDN to have some, some common management plane. We need some management controls. Because this now is treated as a complete single PCF implementation across all our multiple isolation segments. So it's managed by a single ops manager in Bosch, but we also want to have all the network constructs, all the logical switches, all the distributed logical routers, all the NSX edge devices, all the firewall policy that might be deployed in the background, background also managed by a common construct. So we want a common control plane, and that's where NSX manager and vCenter come into play. Now, when we have this, when we have this common management plane for all of our networking constructs and a common management plane for all of our PCF constructs, it starts to be a complex thing. Um, we want to make sure that we can automate this. We want to make sure that we have some capability to, to automate the deployment. So we want automation. And why do we want automation? So in a production world, we may have the need to repave um, we may have a fault in the environment. Uh, we have to redeploy, or we have to scale out and deploy many repetitive of the same type of Cloud Foundry implementations in our environment so that we can have for production or for test. So we start to have the concept of pipelining or automating the deployment of all of the networking constructs, so all of our NSX edge constructs, all of our logical switches, and the CF deployment itself, so that we can now deploy these on demand. Scale as needed, rebuild and repave as necessary. So it's really key that we have some level of automation through the APIs of, of, of NSX and of Cloud Foundry itself so that we can repeat this whole deployment pattern. So this is an overview of the, the constructs inside of NSX that provide PCF with some of its key components that PCF needs uh, for production runtime. Thank you for your time.